in relation to the health assessment and uh, here basically we are looking at the female productive uh, system so we are going to examine the female productive system and as you're preparing to do this examination or this assessment i want to start by introducing this that you have to ensure that there is proper preparation for gynecological examination and also you have to emphasize the importance of pre-examination uh, readiness and uh, by this you have to make sure that you're ready uh, you're prepared yourself uh, with the equipments that are necessary for um, this assessment so in preparation i want to see the steps that we need to follow you have to ensure that the bladder is empty so the patient has to empty the bladder before you start uh, your assessment ask the woman to empty her bladder before the examination and also in the organization uh, for the environment that you're going to use you should have all the necessary equipments uh, that are ready to avoid interruptions uh, during the examination because when you don't bring everything that you need you may end up uh, actually leaving the patient and you're going to look for them and this will interrupt your examination process and you also have to ensure good lighting such as uh, the Welch Allen uh, speculum which has light and if you don't have that then you can use the alternative uh, resources that are available because you need enough light for you to uh, inspect and observe exactly what is happening in relation to the female productive system uh, so in preparation steps we need to continue and see that there is privacy and the communication has to be very uh, very important in this uh, time of assessment as you communicate to your client you need to know what you're supposed to communicate uh, what is vital in your communication uh, so that you don't uh, actually affect the mood and the response of your patient so privacy is key for every individual as you're going to examine and imagine you're going to do a productive system assessment where privacy is very key then also you have to uh, secure the consultation room uh, the room where you're going to examine this patient uh, has to be secure and you have to make sure that uh, this room is not going to be accessed by other people because sometimes uh, there are some rooms that are used by different uh, staffs whereby when you start your examinations uh, people will come and they'll be interfering with you so you have to make sure that this room is secure and you have to secure it for basically your assessment and then communicate that the room is closed for privacy inform the patient that i'm closing this room basically for privacy i remember when i was explain the procedure to this patient what you're going to do they may get scared and think maybe you're intending to do something to them so you have to communicate to them as you're going to close the door tell them the reasons as to why you're closing the door and this is basically to ensure their privacy uh, is uh, paramount then clearly explain the examination process to the woman if you're going to examine her and you're a male or even if you are female because it's something that is uh, maybe a uh, weird to them so you have to tell them i'm going to examine you and this is where i'm going to examine and the reason for the examination is this and the process that is going to take place is like this and like that so that the patient will be comfortable and confident of what you're going to do then also undressing protocol you have to look at this very clearly and keenly uh, depending on the sex that is going to be examining the patient if you are male uh, you have to also look at this and put it into consideration because if you just start um, undressing this uh, patient she may wonder why you are undressing her and she may even cause an alarm for the rest to think maybe you're doing something funny so you have to uh, look at this and see how to approach your patient in the case of undressing so provide a gown or cover for the wound i mean for the woman so when you um going to address this patient tell him or tell her uh, basically tell her that uh, you're going to remove your dress but i need you to put on this gown or i need you to wrap this on yourself so that the patient will be uh, comfortable when you're carrying out your assessment and she will allow to remove and she will put on the gown or put on any other clothes to cover herself then allow her to undress in private to maintain dignity 
Uh, sometimes um, the patients may not want us to be in place where they are undressing themselves. So um, you need to keep yourself off, allow them to undress uh, in privacy. Then after they have undressed, they can tell you I'm done. And then you can go on and carry out your assessment. Uh, patient positioning is also very paramount if you want to assess um, this patient very well. You need to understand or to know which position you're supposed to put this patient or this woman so that you can be able to access and see whatever is necessary for you to assess in the reproductive system. So in primary care, you have to put this mother in a dorsal position with the feet uh, in uh, stirrups or uh, in soles together and then also the knees and pads. So there is a position that is basically put and that is uh, the dorsal position and there is where you are supposed to put uh, the swell where uh, the knees or the, the ankle joints are supposed to touch um, each other while the knees are put apart to expose what you are going to examine. Then in secondary care, you can put the patient in the thotomy Primary means when you're going to do just the basics, but in case the patient has some other complication, like maybe you're going to do evacuation or you're going to examine the cervix in case of a cervical tear and a repair, then these mothers are more put in the hotel position or um, the left natural position for specific cases, depending on the case or depending on the condition or at the problem of the patient in relation to the productive uh, system. Then hand hygiene and glove use is very key uh, because you're going to touch uh, your patient. You need to put on gloves and you need also to wash your hands. And this is where we are able to prevent our presentations from ourselves as the health workers and also from our patients. So this will help prevent um, infection to us and also to our patients. So it is a two-way. So you need to wash your hands and also you need to put on gloves as you're going to examine the patient. So you need to stress the importance of hygiene to ourselves when you are carrying out these procedures and also to colleagues when you see them carrying out procedures, encourage our people to wash their hands before and after uh, carrying out the procedure. The use of the glass examination is key. Uh, so anytime that you're going to do an assessment, especially in relation to touching areas where there are fluid secretions, better put on gloves to protect yourself from touching any fluids from the patient. So what could be the components of the examination in relation to the reproductive system? One of them is the external genitalia inspection. So you're going to first start inspection we're going to just look at at uh, the perineum we're going to look at the perineal area as we're just observing and seeing anything that is either normal or it is abnormal so you look at the perineum and then also the labia majora and then the, the minor then you just be like you're inspecting inspecting and just observing what is um, in those areas. Then you can also look at the clitoris, the meatus, and then the vaginal open uh, examination. This can also be done depending on what really you are trying to assess from your patient and the condition of your patient. And then you are also trying to maybe to check for inflammation and redness, um, then discharge, ulceration, or atrophy. So during the time of inspection on the external genitalia, you'll be trying to look up uh, for any inflammations and then redness on the surface and maybe there can be some kind of discharge as you're observing and maybe ulcerations depending on what problem the patient is presenting with. Then palpation of the external genitalia. So after inspection, you are also expected to palpate. So you can palpate or just touch uh, the labia majora and then also uh, the baculins glands. Sometimes our patients uh, have the baffling uh, gland inflammation whereby they can form an abscess and this can be incised to, ex, um, to, to remove um, uh, maybe the pus in case the patient has developed the baffling glands abscess. And then the perineum uh, tissue uh, palpation, you can also check on the perineum for any swellings, tenderness and then also the masses whereby you're able to identify that there is something in this perineum and you'll be able to tell, is it pain, um, is it a mass, and so forth. 
So uh, we also have a speech learning examination, and this can be in some specific conditions. So it is basically a procedure that allows the clinician to inspect the vagina and then the cervix and to collect samples for testing. So different uh, types of speech terms can be used uh, depending on the size and the shape of the patient's vagina and all that. So the reason for the examination and the clinician's preference is also paramount and uh, some common types of the speech lamp can be um, the metal speech lamp and in this metal speech lamps we can see whether it is a cascos or um, it is the ovoid and so forth so you you'll use the speech lamps in relation to the type of the speech lamp that you prefer so speech lamps have different shapes and also they are different um, mix whereby others are metal, others are plastic. So you identify the one that you think is much more easier for you to use depending on the age of your client and what you're going to assess from your client. Then they may need also to be sterilized before and after each use. So as uh, since you're going to be inserting these questions on these women, in these women, you need to make sure that they are sterile so that you don't cross infect uh, these women. Because when you finish to use it on one, you may realize that this one had some infections and you should not use it on the other because you'll cross-infect uh, that other lady if she didn't have this kind of uh, infection. And this has to be lubricated before you insert it. And they are often used for routine uh, pelvic exams and also for the pap smears. Pap smears is basically the test that you're going to uh, do in relation to assessing uh, maybe cancers from uh, the cervix so you use uh, the speculum to help you view uh, the cervix in, and that's um, when we use in relation to the pap smear artist in most of the mothers who come either presenting or having a complaint or it can even do a routine artist for our cervical cancer so um, the case of the plastic, uh, you can find that uh, these disposable devices come in different sizes and shapes. So these ones are disposable. But the ones that are metallic are reusable, so you can sterilize them. So they are often used for screening for sexually transmitted infections or for patients who are allergic to metals. So this can be the preferred uh, kind of aspiration, but they can be either ovoid or they can be um, the first cause or the same kind of uh, speculum. So we have different uh, mix and um, different uh, shapes that can be used as uh, different uh, kind of examinations can be carried out. So it depends on the type of the procedure that you're going to do and that will also dictate on the kind of uh, speech lamp that you're going to use. Now, so I uh, want us also to uh, maybe put uh, some these other different two types: um, the Padasun uh, speech lamp and this a uh, narrow speech lamp that are suitable for patients with a small or narrow vagina, such as young or naliparous uh, women. So the women who have never produced and the very young children, you can't use the same size of speech lamp that you use on mothers who are grown ups. So you have to consider the age and also the parity of these women before you start uh, doing uh, your speech lamp examination on the different speech lamps that you have in your unit or in your department. So um, materials needed for a speech lamp examination, you need a speech lamp uh, of appropriate type and size if you're going to do a speech lamp examination. You also need gloves and you mentioned that you need to put on gloves when you're doing um, um, a female productive system assessment and you need a lubricant. We very well say that you're not going to insert the spatula when you have not put a lubricant. So you have to put a lubricant uh, in this um, spatula to start inserting them on the women. So lubricant is very uh, you still have to pre-lubricate uh, the spatula before you insert. Then the light source is also necessary. Uh, you need light uh, before you start examining because on inspection and um, in the time when you're inserting the spatula, you are going to basically focus on observing what is um, on the surface or what is 
out of the um, the genitalia and also how you're going to carry out your procedure so you need enough light uh, for you to see what you are doing and how you're going to carry out your procedure you also need swabs and containers for collecting the samples in case you're going to collect a sample for maybe some other investigations so you need to have um, a sample container for you to use to collect the sample and you also need the swabs for cleaning uh, before you collect the sample then a uh, cyto brush and slide for pap smears also um, can be um, one of the uh, materials that you need in case you're going to carry out a pap smear test depending on the indication um, on the spatula insertion and inspection we are going to insert so on the insertion process you have to first lubricate the speculum with warm water or gel we have the ky jellies uh, that is what most people use in different facilities for lubricating uh, most of the things even when you're putting a the catheter you have to lubricate and they always use a gel especially the ky jelly then you explain the procedure to the woman tell her what you're going to do and the discomfort that she's going to have and so on so that when you're doing it she's pre having that prior knowledge of knowing what will happen during the procedure then insert the spatula with the handle or uh, orientation based on the position uh, so you have to handle the spatula depending on the position of the mother and also on the shape of the spatula before you start inserting it so you have to insert it uh, uh, as you're handling it in relation to uh, the position of the mother and the type of the speculum you are using. For inspection, uh, observe the vaginal walls, see what is there, then also observe the cervix and then the potential abnormalities that could be in these different areas. Uh, the cervix characteristics are uh, look at the size of the cervix look at the color the surface and then the horse appearance and there is always a say that a women who have never the horse of the cervix is just like a dot but when you look at the women who have ever produced the cervix is like a slit so that can be the difference if someone has ever told you that she has never produced when you look at the cervix you can tell that this person has ever given birth so uh, all this you can see during uh, the process of inspection for cervical cytology um, is basically a screening test that detects for abnormal cells in the cervix and uh, this can be uh, precancers or precancerous cells along the uh, cervix and this can tell you maybe uh, there is a sign of cervical cancer so that's when uh, always what always we do as a procedure for identifying uh, cancerous cells in relation to the cervix. So this is called the cervical uh, cytology kind of test. So you have to swab, uh, make a swab uh, as you collect the specimen. So swab collection is always a procedure that involves taking a sample of cells or fluid from the cervix using a soft brush or a cotton uh, tipped kind of applicator. Uh, many times I think we have always uh, collected specimens using uh, some of the different applicators and you just apply the applicator on the surface of the area that you're expected to get a sample. So when you apply it there, just um, sweeping through uh, that area will help you pick uh, some of the uh, either particles and uh, maybe pick some of the cells in that area and that is what will be used for assessing or examination to identify uh, the different kind of other cells whether it is cancerous or it is not so uh, we have to do a swab collection uh, which is basically a procedure that involves um, picking out some cells or any fluid around the cervical area to check for a cervical cancers then speculum examination is a visual kind of inspection of the vagina and the cervix using a device that is called a speculum and we mentioned about it so the word speculum examination is basically showing us that you are going to use an equipment or a device that is called a speculum for carrying out your examination and this holds the vaginal walls open 
So when you want to see what is inside, uh, you want to see the cervix, you want to observe it, to visualize it, then you can use a vaginal spatula. And for it, when you put it inside, it holds the uh, vaginal walls apart and you're able to see exactly what is happening with the woman's uh, cervix and what can be even discharging uh, through the cervix. So what materials do you need uh, for cervical cytology and swab collection? So you need a spatula for appropriate size, of appropriate size and shape. Uh, so this looks at the size of the lady or the age. So you need to get um different, uh, actually um, a suitable um, spatula in relation to uh, the age and also the size. And that's when you'll be able to insert it um, uh, properly and adequately and to be able to uh, show you what you need to see. Then also you have to have a lubricant, either water-based or non-medicated gel. Then gloves are always supposed to be there and enough light for you to observe. And then also cervical uh, spatula or brush for cytology in case you're supposed to remove a specimen uh, for cytological examination. And a sterile swab or applicator for swab collection. And these ones are basically uh, the equipment that you are going to use for collecting uh, the specimens. And then you may also need a slide or vial for cytology and that is where you're going to put the specimen after you've collected it from either the swab or uh, by use of the applicator then a transport medium or a container for swab collection you should also be having that sometimes you can have a slide of the vial for cytology or you can have um, a container that you're going to put this swab and then it's kept there it's closed there um, properly in order to avoid any other uh, microorganism or any other thing from entering in it until uh, it reaches the site where it is going to be um, investigated. Then the labels and uh, requisition forms are very necessary and these requisition forms have to, um, to, to show the name of the patient and they have to bear the, the age, the sex, all the biodata of this patient and the test that is going to be carried out in this placement. And we want also to look at the bimanual examination that was uh, basically about the speculum examination, how we do it, why we do it, and so forth. So on the bimanual examination, uh, the bimanual examination is a procedure that allows the healthcare provider to assess the size shape and position of the female productive organs so it involves two steps that is vaginal wall examination you're going to examine the vaginal walls and you're going to use your own hands or your fingers and that's why they call it by manual because you're going to do it using your own hands so the provider inserts two fingers into the vagina and gently presses on the walls to feel for any abnormalities such as the lumps, the cysts, or the tenderness around the vaginal walls. So you're going to insert your fingers and you're going to examine to feel for any kind of tenderness or any kind of swelling or cyst around the or along at the vaginal walls. And that's why they call it by manual examination. Then cervical assessment and palpation. Uh, of the uterus and um, adnexia. So uh, the provider places uh, the other hand on the lower abdomen and gently moves it to fill the cervix. So you have to fill the cervix and you'll understand what is happening with the cervix just using your own fingers. That's why the midwives say and the gynecologists, the obstetricians, uh, they believe that our eyes are in the fingers. So when you insert your fingers, you're going to actually uh, comprehend uh, what is happening inside this mother's vagina or what is happening with the cervix just within your brain as the fingers are inserted you're able to understand what is going on so as you insert your fingers you're going to feel for the cervix feel for the uterus and uh, maybe the ovaries and that is when you're doing the palpation so the provider may also move the fingers inside the vagina to change uh, the angle of the uterus and the ovaries so you can do this um, basically to assess how your uh, patient is 
uh, feeling and when you're doing this you're able to see the facial expression for tenderness and you're able also to detect um, whether there is any swelling or any mass and this helps to detect any changes in the size of the, of the ovaries and also on the size of the vagina and on the size of um, maybe the cervix you can feel if there is tenderness or if there is um, any abnormal growth within those areas you can feel it when you're using your fingers and that is the bimanual examination so you can talk about the shape you can talk about the consistency or the mobility of these organs as you are doing your palpation and examining with your own hands and documentation is very valuable and very uh, vital and you make sure that you document everything that you have assessed from this mother so uh, the key findings to include should be the external genitalia you have to tell us what you have observed um, on the labias what did you see um, on the mons pubis what did you see where there lies or what and uh, you'll be able to document all this so that you can be able to tell uh, later after your assessment then also look at the vagina what did you feel uh, the cervix the uterus the next year and all that so the detailed information should be noted the size the position a uh, consistency mobility if there are masses and then the tenderness as you examine your patient and then in uh, in inclusion of the examination results and any procedures that you performed so you have to mention any kind of procedure uh, that you performed on this patient and write their findings exactly what you found in relation to the different procedures that you're able to carry out in relation to your patient's uh, examination so basically uh, that's what we had for now and i believe when you get our patients who come to us complaining of different uh, issues in relation to the reproductive system we shall be able to identify some of the abnormalities and shall be able to uh, differentiate the normal from abnormal and shall be able to comprehend uh, those different abnormalities and come up with the right diagnosis and therefore we shall be able to manage our clients so at uh, this comes to the end of our session for tonight and i wish you a good night thank you